What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Confidence. Did my email really had to go off at that time? That was kind of sick. Let's be honest. Did you hear that? I don't know if you did. But anyways, fucking lit. Today's podcast is going to be extra special. Um, I say that, but it's really not <laughs> because uh, it's it's going to be you know like we've you've been used to. It's just gonna be me talking, right? But this time we are going to have listeners send in their assumptions about me. So that could be anything. I I I haven't listened to them. You're you're gonna listen to them live with me. So the first time you're hearing this assumption is the first time I'm hearing this assumption. Um, and on top of that too, I'm just going to go, you know, do a little quick review on what's going on in my life, how I'm feeling. I know this last podcast that we made before this, uh, inside the mind of an avoidant was very deep, was very deep. And, um, one thing I want to make sure that I'm doing is also showing my more playful side of myself and I'm not forcing it, right? It, it needs to be real. It needs to be authentic. And how I'm feeling in the moment when I record this podcast is exactly what I'm going to say. And it's exactly what I'm going to deliver. I'm not here to just, you don't know, throw a smoke screen in front of your face, right? Um, and you know, just to kind of wrap up from last week and, and, and I'll be honest with you this weekend. I was going to record this podcast probably on Saturday and on Sunday. Saturday, we got a little bit of trouble. Um, you know, I hung out with a friend and ended up doing shrooms. Um, I actually did shrooms with a friend on Friday and Saturday night this week, um, which was really nice. It was really fun. Um, I'm really starting to enjoy just doing me. And I... Uh, Fuck. You know what? Actually, that's a fucking lie. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. And I'll tell you why. Because this weekend, it was good and it was bad. It was hard and it was soft. Um, so, you know, I told you guys that I'm starting to go celibate, right? Like I'm not going to sleep or be in a romantic connection at least until November. I think I need some time to myself to really develop myself a little bit further um, and really just get back into the things that I'm passionate about. And that was a lot of the podcast last week, right? Talking about, you know, the girl that, uh, you know, she went to Europe and now, you know, we're not necessarily talking at this point. I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, but really like this period of my life is to re-engage into the things that I find important for myself. And, I found that over the last couple of years, you know, I, I, I've been having this same pattern of saying that I want to really do that, but then somehow getting entangled, you know, with a woman and next thing you know, my mood is fluctuating, all these things are happening um, and it's very difficult. And honestly, I still kind of feel that way. And this weekend was like that too, because, you know, on one hand, it's like, obviously I've made the choice to focus on myself and to do the things that I really care about. But I do find that I'm still stuck in some similar patterns and habits. So this weekend, I hung out with my friend again, the, the girl that's a therapist. Awesome time. Same thing. You know, we're hanging out for hours and we're just going in on our feelings and the things that are happening. And it felt really good to just kind of like talk about those things and get it out. Um, one thing I, I really want to do is kind of just limit the amount of time and energy I'm spending on talking about my shit, my relationships, those things, because I find that the more I talk about them, the more they fester, the more they, they block me from, again, engaging on the things that are truly important and present to me. So anyways, we go through that. Um, Saturday, same thing. Actually, I hung out with uh, one of my gym crushes, and it was interesting because it was like a little different in the sense that, you know, this is the first time I've been hanging out with a girl where, you know, I made the choice to not have a sexual sexual implication towards it. And it made things not like it was weird to just be somebody's friend. <laughs> uh, but it was just like, you know, there was many moments where I was like, wow, I probably should be making out with you right now. Or wow, like I normally in this situation would have made a physical advance on this. And it's not that it wasn't time appropriate. I felt the energy, right? There was that vibe there. But on the other side of the coin, it's like, as I'm really looking for something real right now, um, I've realized that like 
introducing that physical aspect into the relationship so quickly, which is what I'm normally used to doing, um, is not, it's just not what I want to do right now. Now, normally on a first date, am I going to make out with you? Absolutely. Right? Like I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to show you my confidence and not just show you my confidence. I, yo, it's the vibe, you know, I'm feeling it. I, I, I want to make that advance. Right. Um, but it's nice actually just spending that time and just seeing like if we're truly compatible. And I think that's what happens is when you remove the physical aspect of things, it's like, okay, normally I would spend two hours of this, us making out, cuddling, just bullshitting, but like you eliminate that and it's like, okay, you really have to have a strong foundational relationship of friendship, right? The conversation better be fire or I'm going to want to go home. <laughs> you know, how many times am I really going to hang out with you? Uh, and, and this is supposed to be like a romantic relationship, or I guess that's what it's supposed to be. Right. And there's no physicalness happening. If your personality sucks, I'm not going to spend my time with you. Um, and I feel like that's just the reality. And if you eliminate that aspect of relationships, it's crazy how quickly you see if you fuck with somebody or not, right? Like, do I actually care about spending my time with you? Because I could be spending my time in many other creative ways for myself. Um, you know, nevertheless, I had actually, I really did have a good time, um, with both people. And honestly, it's nice because I've really just been hanging out with people just as friends and it has felt really good to just be that and do that. Now, flip side of the coin is, you know, sometimes like, or, or at this period that I'm in right now, the reason I said I'm back in patterns is like, I did spend that time with people. And something that is weird for me is like, all right, like am I supposed to hang out with people? Like, am I enjoying this? Am I doing this because I feel like it's what I should be doing on the weekend? Um, what's really weird for me is sometimes I get this anxiety when I'm spending time with people. Like if it's not productive or, you know, revenue generating or, you know, whatever it might be, right? It could seem like it's, it's not of use, but I can't look at my time that way because the reality is, is, I do get a lot of value from just just enjoying the moment with someone, being present with someone, getting those, having those conversations. I, honestly, I generate a lot of my ideas, a lot, and plus a lot of my content is based on my experiences, right? So those things can't ever go away. But sometimes I do feel this like pit in my stomach where I'm like, oh no, like, man, should I've been making a video right now? Should I've been recording a podcast right now? Um, and sometimes finding that balance is really hard. And I think as I've gotten older, it's been really getting really bad. Like, I feel like I need to be alone all the time because I want to work. But what happens is, is when I'm alone all the time and I start working all the time, I then start feeling even weirder not having the balance, right? So it's like, you really do have to have some sort of balance. It's, it's, it's almost, I think, near impossible to be working 24 fucking seven. And as much as I really want to do that, um, I got to understand that it's okay to fucking spend six hours, seven hours not doing something uh, productive. Um, and with that being said though, too, it's like, I feel like my mood lately has not been fully at peace and fully stable. Now, has it been a lot more peaceful now that I'm not worrying about the long distance stuff? Definitely. And I think that's something that I'm recognizing about myself is truly, I am not willing to do long distance. I don't want to do it. And as much as I know it'd be easier to just give somebody, uh, or maybe give this girl that, right? I, I saw some people in the YouTube comments were just like telling me, and honestly, it hit me right now. They were like, you like her, just give her that security. Just call her your girlfriend. Like everything's going to be all right. And, and that's the thing is like, I truly do believe that I would not have as many trust quote unquote issues with this person if I did provide that security. But the reality is, is I'm also not going to jump into a relationship with someone where I'm not 100% sure either. And I think that's the other aspect of this that we're missing. It's not that she's this perfect woman or th this person that I've met where I'm like, oh my God, every box is checked. Like I need to lock it down. It's like, no, but what person is right? Like every single person we meet and especially as an avoidant, my first instinct is all right, find the flaws, right? Find, find, and I'm not doing this consciously. Right. But it's almost like, okay, what are the differences? Do you really want this? Uh, maybe she's compromising your independence. Chris, you got to work. You can't be with this person. So it's like this battle in my mind between like, okay, I like her and she's dope, but she also has flaws, right? And that's okay. But are those flaws really somebody like uh, that I want to be with, right? Are we truly compatible? 
And then I go back and forth. It's like, is that your avoidant mind speaking? Or is that truly how it is? Are you truly not satisfied with this person? Are you truly not in sync with this person? And I think the reality is, is I just, I don't know that information yet. And, but because we're long distance and we're not at that full speed yet. Yes. I have this, you know, love for her. Uh, Yo, I will flat out say, I do like her. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's not a secret, right? Like Of course I have feelings for this person, but also I've had feelings for a lot of people in the past where it had been long distance and we didn't know and it was this back and forth and then I got it and then I had it and then I was like, oh, I don't appreciate this as much as I thought I did. And, And I think that's something that honestly is holding me back a little bit too. It's like, okay, I don't want to push anything. I don't need to, right? I could be patient with it. And listen, you come back from Europe, if you are, again, I don't know how we would, you know, contact each other. Okay. So a little bit of follow-up story. Um, so obviously she stopped talking to me, uh, the girl last week from, because I had the friend over and I didn't text her and she got all flustered and she felt like I put her in an uncomfortable situation and I didn't care about her. But ultimately, again, it was just a platonic friend. Um, so we were both kind of like rights and rights, but again, just issues, right? Conflict. And that's not something that me and her both want in our lives. I don't want that. I got shit to do. And she doesn't want that. She's got to enjoy her trip. Um, so she stopped talking to me about a day or two later. She contacts me and says like, you know, and almost like put it on me. It was just like, so what's like happening? Like, I can't do this. Like, do you like still want to like talk and like not see other people? And, you know, first off I was like, bro, you fucking broke up with me. Number one, I was like, I didn't even choose this to begin with. Right. I didn't say I didn't want to talk to you. Um, but now that I've had like a day or two to kind of like, you know, think about things, uh, you know, that she did do that. I was like, you know what? I do feel more at peace, not worrying about it. And I think the best course of action for me at this time is two things. Number one, listen, if we're, we're going to be long distance, like it just, that doesn't work for me right now. You know, if we're not seeing each other consistently, I can't build a real relationship with you. And I, and I don't want to do that. Right. It's not that you're not a potentially great partner for me. I think she could be, um, but two, two factors, number one, long distance. And the other thing is, okay, are we truly meant for each other? Are we compatible? Can we again, see each other consistently to figure out if that's what is meant to be? Do I feel like feelings are there? Absolutely. Do I feel like there's a lot of potential for a true relationship? Definitely. Um, but again, we, we don't have that ability at this current moment. And the second thing is, is I'm not fully 100% there yet. So until that happens where we have that opportunity to be in the same place and we get to really trial it out, at that point, I will either make you uh, my girlfriend or not. Or, and I, I think what's happening right now is this. To be honest, I want to stop talking about it. (laughs) I want to stop putting energy towards it. I want to really get in myself. Oh yeah. I want to, I want to fuck me. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like fucking asexual energy. I want to look at me in the mirror and just start fucking, uh, no, like, you know what I mean? Like just, I just want to be in on Chris right now. Um, and what that means is being at peace um, not chasing women, not chasing romance. Like I've had people DM me. I've had things like pop up like women wise. And I'm just at this juncture where I'm just like, if it's, if it starts to turn sexual, I just turn it off. I just stop. Um, and it feels really good to do that. I feel really good right now. Just being at peace with working on my business and working on myself. Um, And it's hard because it still kind of feels like this situation's a little bit in limbo, right? It's not like it's over. It's not like I hate her. It's not like we technically like broke up. I mean, yeah, I guess we, again, said I didn't want to do long distance, especially, you know, not while you're not going to be back here for another two, three weeks. Uh, But I don't know where that really leads. But I think here's the thing is that is something for my future self to handle and discuss. And, you know, when that time comes and, I don't know if she reaches out to me or, you know, she's here or whatever. And we meet by all means, let's deal with it and address it then. Um, you know, but in the meantime, I think it's time for me to get in on me. All I know is, is that regardless of her presence in my life or not, there's a lot of work that it still needs to be done for myself. And I just know that my purpose is honestly bigger than that, right? My purpose is bigger than this relationship right now. 
um, because I'm not at my final stage. I, you know, something that I've, I've has also been kind of tough for me is kind of figuring out who I am or, or not even necessarily who I am, but just what do I want from my brand? Like I, I love helping people with their relationships and things, but when it truly comes down to it, like I want to be an internet personality. Like I just want to be somebody that is able to show up online consistently, you know, just be himself ultimately and truly, uh, and have fun and be playful and, and be that energetic, fun, positive person that I, I know I am. And I feel like I haven't been that way. And I feel like this relationship in a way has taken me away from that, right? Like my mood has fluctuated so much worrying about that. And I'm just done with that. You know what I mean? I am retiring the rumination. I'm retiring the overthinking. I don't need to do that. I need to just get into me and enjoy my life as is. And if that happens to take hold and it takes shape, great. You know, I do want something real. I, I don't want to mistrust people. Um, and, and here's the thing. I really truly believe that I can be secure in a relationship. I truly believe I can give somebody trust, but it starts with me giving them actual commitment. And the only way that we get to actual commitment is if I spend time with you on a friendship level and I truly believe that you are my person. Um, and to me, that takes time, right? That takes time to develop. So until that happens, this is all you're going to fucking get. It's just me and maybe some non-sexual awkward moments such as... <laughs> Uh, I also had, uh, one of my girlfriends over last night and it's not a girlfriend. Um, she's potentially going to be my assistant and I had her over yesterday and I told her because, you know, there's an assistant situation and she is gorgeous. Um, and I, and I told her and we shook hands on it. Literally. It's fucking wild. I'm standing at my counter and I'm like, listen, we're going to be working close to each other. You're attractive. I'm attractive. It's very hard to not allow the moment sometimes to get crazy. Um, I was like, let's promise each other right now that we are not going to have sex with each other. <laughs> um, and it's fucking wild that I have to like make that contract with people, but it's just so true. Like, you know, when you're working with people and you're next to them and everybody's attractive and it's fun and it's just whatever, so many things can happen. And I just keep noticing that when I bring sex into the equation, um, it just gets messy, right? Feelings get involved and I just, I'm done doing that. And what sucks, man, is like, I, I really been jerking off a lot, you know, like that shit's been hard. And, uh, I see, I don't know if that's a good thing though, because here's the one thing I like, you know, I'm not doing any romance with other people, but I'm also mentally fucking people, you know, online and, and not like sharing DMS. I'm not like sending uh pics back and forth between people, which is also an old habit of mine you know, like snap fucking people essentially like, you know, they're sending me nudes. I'm sending nudes back. I have sent a couple dick pics in my life. I'm not going to lie. Um, and not like that, not like an unsolicited dick pic. You don't get the dick until like you have shown me a lot and I've, you've earned my trust. Then at that point, it's like, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like teasing each other. Okay. I'm not going to go like deep into this, but my whole thing is let's just say back in the day, um, you meet somebody online, they're long distance and it's like, okay, uh, do I, am I really going to meet up with you? Not really. Do I really care? Like, not really. Okay. So let's like, you know, let's have some fun. Um, Hey, you know, you have Snapchat. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know. And then it just starts with some risque pictures, you know, I'm sending my face. I'm like, that's hot. You know, um, next thing you know, we're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There's an ass, there's a titty. Um, you know, she's telling me to come on her and I'm like, oh, moaning in my bathroom. <laughs> All right. Let's not go down that road. There's no reason to go there. My my family is listening to this and they don't appreciate that. Or maybe they do. You know what? It's weird to think about that, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, like, your family also has sex. Like, it's wild to think that people that you're blood related to also are disgusting. <laughs> you know, you don't like to think about it because you're like, you know, like you're like, oh, you're my cousin or you're my, you know, brother or you're my mother or my grandma. Like grandma was getting fucked at one point. You know what I mean? Like grandma was doing some nasty ass shit that you don't even know about. But when you look at grandma, like you're thinking about cookies 
You know, you're thinking about fucking, I don't know. My Nona used to cut me some apple slices. That used to be my favorite fucking snack. And she used to cut them in a little napkin. She used to cut the skin off and then cut the, the apple into pieces for me. My fucking Nona, rest in peace. Mwah. I fucking miss you so much. Oh, well, Nona. And I never said that to her. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Like, she was probably a freak back in the day. I don't really know what the fuck she was doing. Like, she was like a old European woman. Um... Just living in New York, whatever that entails. Okay, um, but let's get into the assumptions. I wanted to leave a lot of room for that today because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of weird fucking comments and stories. And before I get into the voice assumptions, we're going to talk about some of the text assumptions that people submitted um, on Instagram. We'll do rapid fire. Um, let's see what people got to say. Um, you have a hard exterior, but you have a big softy on the inside. Absolutely, we'll get to that. Uh, you're a fire quarterback, definitely. I think you're handsome. Probably a lot of fun to chill with. Kissy faces. Mm. Um, 110%. I assumed you were tall. No, you were wrong. <laughs> you're insecure. Uh, absolutely. And honestly, here's the thing. You're saying that I'm insecure, but like who isn't, right? It's such a weird... I feel like when people call people insecure, I'm like, bro, I don't know if I've ever met somebody that truly isn't somewhat insecure. So you can keep saying that, but, and you're never going to be wrong, but take a look inwards. If you're telling me I'm insecure, um, it's on your mind. You cry when you get tattoos. False. I'm on Percocet <laughs> and I have a really good numbing cream. If you need uh, suggestions on that, I got you. But no, I'm usually medicated when I'm getting my tattoos. So I do not feel it. Powder creatine. Uh, I do not use creatine at all. Player. Nope. Um, I assume you're a total beefcake. Um, okay. <laughs> I guess so. Um, you're seeking deep mental soul connections, but you're only finding superficial people. Mm, somewhat truth to that, right? But here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm finding a lot of superficial people, I feel like that makes me superficial. You are what you are attract, right? What, what you attract. Um, so I feel like that makes me feel like I need to go a little bit deeper with myself and I need to get a little bit deeper into myself in that direction. Um, that you don't wash your arsehole. Oh, I mean, I, I, I definitely wash my asshole. I promise. Um, I actually just trimmed it the other day. It's pretty spotless. I would show you, but it kind of looks weird. It's like a, it's like a landing strip, but reverse. It's like hairless inside my ass crack, but there's hair on the outside. It looks really good, to be honest, actually. It's like a sexy forest with a road. <laughs> um, your social media following is a huge form of self-validation for you. You know, I guess on some real shit, um, you're, you're, I guess you're not wrong, right? I feel like it is very self-validating for me, and... I think we talked about this on the previous podcast. I feel like I do uh, crave external validation for the person that I am. Um, but I do feel like I'm also very intrinsically, internally motivated as well. So I want to say I'm a human amount on this. And I don't want to say I'm more or less than the average person when it comes to wanting or desiring external validation. You promote healthy habits, but smokes regularly. Any form of smoking is bad for your body. Making a blanket statement like that is just absolutely ludicrous. Um, I mean, yeah, I smoke. I guess it's not the best habit, but it, I'm also fucking human and I want to smoke. To say that it's unhealthy for me and to judge me on that doesn't really make any sense. Because again, this is, I mean, we talk about this all the time, but imagine if I was fully healthy, sober, didn't do shit. Like, yeah, what, so I could tell people then, yeah, that I do all that. How fucking fun is my life? I can't just relax and smoke a joint. I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. It, I wish I could be perfect, but I, I also don't desire to be perfect. You know what I mean? I don't desire that. You're a tender heart. Oh, you fucking know it. You think about the Roman Empire every day. Fucking false. The Roman Empire thing is fucking dumb as shit. I'm sorry. That's stupid. If you really believe in any juncture that a man thinks about that more than on a monthly basis, unless they are studying history, you're a fucking ass. That's how I feel. I'm trying to say they trying to say they stupid as shit to be able to eat your ass. Not sure what that means. You're under six foot. That's an accurate statement. Um, you don't actually want already for healed enough to have interest in any emotionally healthy girl. 
Oof. That's actually a pretty good one uh, besides the English. Um, and I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I really am. And what I mean by that is like, I feel like I want and I feel like I'm ready and I feel like I'm healed enough, but it's entirely possible that I'm not fully there yet. Um, I feel like if I truly found that right person or if I looked at, if I met somebody, I was like, whoa, they really blew me away. I would 100% be on that wave. Um, but I also don't believe in that right now because my standards are probably a lot higher than what I'm providing. So I that's why I feel like I'm not ready yet because the person that I expect to be with, I don't know if I'm living up to the value of that in my mind yet. And also because I feel like I have a little bit more potential in me that I have not forthcome and shown that I want to get to so that I can feel comfortable making that decision. But I do feel like you might be right that there is a gap between what I'm expecting in somebody versus who I am right now. Uh, big cock. It's not like, I'm going to be honest, like it's not like fucking long, but it'll make your insides hurt. Um, you can give a mean back massage and you probably have a foot fetish. <laughs> um, I guess you're not wrong. I... I feel like I can give a, a pretty solid back massage. Foot fetish? Yes and no. I wouldn't call it a fetish, but I'm down with feet. Um, not an assumption, but I enjoy following you. Okay, I don't care. Um, you have commitment issues, but we all do. You're not wrong. That you're gay. Uh, I've never fucked a dude, but I've heard dudes fucking. Looking like a great time. Definitely great A in bed and comfort. For sure, I am wrong. No, you're not wrong. I would say A in both of those areas. <laughs> nah, JK, comfort, you get a C. You're gay. Still gay. I'm still gay. Um, you're a soft, sensitive guy that overthinks. Yes, I am. How could I be both a fuckboy, a soft, sensitive guy that overthinks, and all of these things? Hmm, I don't really fucking know. You tell me. You look like when you nut, you cry. <laughs> Honestly, I've never nutted and cried. But now that you're saying it, I kind of feel like I should. Um, I'm a cool dude, but a little conceited. Not wrong. Are you okay? No. I think you're cool and funny. And I like your eyebrow. Not eyebrows. I like your eyebrow. <laughs> you're addicted to the spark of conflict because peacefulness is mistaken for being boring. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't agree with that. I really don't agree with that. Back maybe... Maybe back in the day, sure, but I really don't like toxic. I really do not want some girl that's giving me a headache. If if you are playing games, yo, I will leave you in a heartbeat. In a heart. If you even lied to me even about something that you're doing, you're done. You're toast. I do not fuck around with games. I really don't. Uh, so that part of life is done. All right, this person um, wrote me a fucking novel. I assume you have a problem with always blaming yourself. You always blame your upbringing. You blame your avoidant personality behavior. You blame yourself for why your relationships don't last. You just haven't found someone you care deeply for that is also willing to accept who you are, who will be willing to support you, help you, and compromise for you to break those barriers. They haven't provided you with a safe relationship environment. They're not patient or understand that changes you will make will not happen overnight. They try to control your behaviors. They don't understand when you need time alone. You guys don't wait till you're calm to have serious conversations. They demand many things from you and complain. They don't ask how you feel or validate your feelings. Ultimately, someone who is not aware of themselves, their feelings, let alone a mindful individual. And yes, you may do many of those things too, but if you're making them aware of how you are, what you're doing to better yourself, why do they act against you? Whoa. Whoa. This is some real ass shit. Someone who not only says they understand you, but they actually understand you and they're willing to work with you and not against you. Someone who wants you to thrive and not just because it makes them feel validated and wanted, but because they love you and want you to grow and build with the best version of you. That person is and will come for you. Watch. Wow. Wow. That's the most real shit I've ever heard in my fucking entire life. And honestly, this is maybe something that I've been trying to express and 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 say um, in some weird ways is that like, I feel like people think that I'm avoiding this connection and I'm like, 
I really feel sometimes like I haven't found that. Again, I, I do truly feel that I'm a special person. Um, and I really am looking for somebody that is on that level of self-awareness with me, which I don't believe many people are. I'm not going to dive too deep into this because there's some other questions later that I'm going to dive deeper into this about, but, um, just, just wow. Honestly, just wow. Um, great response. And honestly, I, I probably couldn't agree more. I, I feel like that's a great counter to all of the things that I've been discussing and talking about here. And honestly, that shit just honestly changed my view even on my relationship that I'm in right now, because that's the reality. It's like, bro, all these people do just want my attention. They sometimes aren't self-aware. And those are the things I truly feel. And I, I truly sometimes don't feel that they truly understand me to my core. That you're still using the community vibrator and you like butt stuff. So I, what they're referring to is, is that I used, I had a vibrator that I said that I've used on multiple people. <laughs> I don't use it. The batteries ran out <laughs> and I don't know how to charge it. Um, and butt stuff, you know, I, I'll accept a finger and a tongue. Um, and even those things, you know, just be a little careful. I'm a little ticklish. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I'm not against it. Just no objects in my asshole, you know, just fingers, tongues, and love. That's it. All right, let's go to the voice questions. This one's pretty long. Let's, uh, let's, let's give it a whirl that you're lost in life and you're trying to find your next step, your next thing, like yeah, who isn't the go, you know, but with listening to your podcast, I feel like you have problems committing. And I think that your next step is for you to get in a good, wholesome relationship, but also like maybe you need to see a therapist, you know, like I maybe you need to work on that commitment because time out, I time out, time out. I see a therapist. First off, what are you talking about? Don't talk to me like that. First off, and I will say this, something that irks me to my core is people telling other people that they need therapy. I'm sorry, who made you the judge? I understand you're, you know, you're giving an assumption and you're, you know, you're giving your two cents. I get it. But my whole thing is when I hear that from somebody like I'm just like, bro, we gotta, you gotta look inward a little bit. You can't be telling people to go to therapy. If they decide to do that for themselves, you could suggest it if you're their friend, right? If you're their friend and, and you want to suggest that, sure. But it almost makes people feel like there's something wrong with them when in reality, there's nothing wrong with anybody. There's not. We're all on our own journey. We all are following our heart. We're all a result of all the experiences and things in our lives. Do I think therapy is absolutely useful to everyone? Definitely. Am I actually in therapy? Yes, I am. I've been in therapy uh, my childhood, you know, my family life. And then even now, right, I've re-picked it up. I've been in therapy for the last like two months. Um, and even to this assumption that you're making that I need a wholesome relationship, and don't get me wrong, I feel like that would actually do me very good. I feel like when I've been consistent with women in my life where I do have that relationship, I do feel really good. I'm not denying that. Uh, but to say somebody needs a relationship, and to me, in my opinion, is also a projection. Um, I think a lot of people, they get weary of people that are comfortable on their own. Um, and that's the thing is like, there's some people that are truly happy on their own. There's some people that, you know, commitment is not something that they want to do and that should be okay. And that should be accepted. You know, it shouldn't be, Oh, again, it's almost like I'm, I'm almost getting the vibe of like, Oh, there's something here. Yeah, of course I have my avoidant traits. Of course. Um, you know, have I pushed away a lot of intimacy in my life? Definitely. But I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't mean I'm unhappy. It doesn't mean that I've done things that I don't want to do. You know, that's the reality is if I was truly so satisfied in those relationships, why am I not in them either? And I understand a lot of that has to do with some of the things that I've been working on. But at the end of the day, it's like, I, I've always really enjoyed my independence. Now, maybe it is to a fault, but at the same time, again, I really do enjoy that. It's not like, it's not like I'm sitting here thinking like, oh my God, my life is in sh the shitter. I have a great fucking life, you know? And a lot of that, I can thank my independence. I can thank my ability to not settle for a relationship at, at those younger junctures of my life. Now, um, do I need to work on the idea of thinking a relationship is settling? Definitely. Um, and it's something that I want to get you know, into and used to, but 
Hold on. Let's let her finish. I think every time someone, a woman comes and you're like hella down for them, you tell yourself something else and you don't go through with it. But I think you sit there and regret it. AKA Miami. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Don't hate me. But <laughs> that's just my assumption. Love you so much. Love the mm-hmm. podcast. So glad you started your podcast. because I miss Snappy and Jay. But yeah. So if you think that I regret losing Miami, you're wild. <laughs> Uh, so for the people that don't know, Miami was the, um, girl that I dated long distance. That was a bottle girl. Um, she was like flying here every week and no, I I don't regret that because you know, that one to me was a clear example of, I think I was dating lustfully with her. She's very attractive, but I truly do not believe we are anywhere close to being the same person. That connection was not built on friendship Like it's not, it was built a lot on sex. It was built a lot on looks and shallowness and vanity um, rather than a deep understanding of who I am and a deep understanding of who she is. So I don't agree with that at all. And that's the thing is like the love that I'm looking for is deeper than that. All right, we're rolling. I feel like you're a nice guy, but you're probably nice to everyone which can be good, but also, I don't know. (laughs) I feel like it makes you sleep around because you're so nice. I don't know. Kind of seem like a home, but like a nice home (laughs) where I don't want to cut you off because you're nice, but I want to cut you off because you're home. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways, you're so cute. (laughs) <laughs> I'm honestly confused. I don't, I don't know how to feel. Um, I think what she's saying or, and I've heard this maybe from girls too, is that they feel like because I'm so friendly with people that I'm for everyone, which makes me then a hoe. Have I had sex with like, I don't know, a decent amount of people, I guess. I mean, what's a lot to you? I guess that's the the hard part about calling somebody a hoe is like, what is your perception of a hoe? What is your perception of a guy that sleeps around or someone that sleeps around? And first off, if I'm single and I'm being honest with people, um, I don't think there's necessarily an issue with it. Uh, and I think a lot of people are just nervous with that. But here's the thing. If there's like a, a right person in my life, I'm not sleeping around with other people. I'm going to have sex with somebody if I want to, if I think they're, they're dope and the vibe is right. Sure. Am I in that phase in my life right now? No, I'm not. Do I, would I appreciate a more serious, real connection? Yes. But in the meantime, if I meet an attractive woman and we're vibing and I tell her my truth and I just say, Hey, like I'm open to something, but you know, I don't really know. And if she's down to fuck and we fuck, we fuck. Does that make me a fucking hoe? Sure. You could consider you go ahead. Call me a hoe. But the reality is if I was giving you that attention, you wouldn't give no fucks. Hey, Mr. Nappy. My first assumption of you was that you were a fuck boy. Again, what's your definition of fuck boy? I need to understand that, right? Because you could call me a fuck boy. Yeah. Do I have fuck boy tendencies? Here's my thing. I think the difference between a fuck boy And a not fuck boy, I guess, is does he tell you the truth? To me, a fuck boy is a guy that just like runs his mouth, wastes your time and kind of just tells you what you want to hear and doesn't really give a fuck about women or not women in general, but just doesn't give a fuck about like committing. He just doesn't really care. Um, but he kind of like makes it seem like he cares to get you on the hook. And then he's just like fucking off on the side. Am I doing that? No, I'm being really blunt with you about how I feel. It, am I again? Am I a fuck boy for telling you the truth? If I meet you and I only want to have sex with you, go ahead, call me a fuck boy. You could label me whatever the fuck you want to label me. It doesn't change the behavior for me, right? Um, but if if you were to, lo- I guess me versus like a nice guy or more of a, I don't even, I hate the word, but I'm just gonna say more of a beta type energy man. Yeah. I definitely look like a fuck boy, right? I could, I talk about sex openly. I'm confident about myself in the bedroom. I'm confident that I can, um, talk to women. I'm very confident about, uh, corralling the opposite sex. 
I guess that's a fuck boy, right? Because you feel like that dude probably has options, which facts. Yeah, I do. I guess I'm a fuck boy then. I don't really know. Am I nice and really genuine though? Am I really genuine and authentic about everything that I'm doing? Definitely. Am I trying to fuck anybody over? Absolutely fucking not. Again, if I feel that I need to tell you a truth to protect your heart, I definitely will. My second assumption is that you're down for anything and everything. You're just a big old freak. Mm, I'm just a big old freak. Oh, you, you already fucking know. No, honestly, I don't. Okay, it just depends on what your definition of freak is. I think to the average bear, I'm a little freakier, right? But I would not consider myself a freak. I think where I get wild or the freakiness comes from my mouth. <laughs> like I be just saying some wild ass shit in your, in your ear that is going to make the experience feel like you're in a horror movie and not like <laughs> my whole thing is, is just like, I want you to feel like, holy shit. Like what the fuck is really happening to me right now? Like, is this lust? Is this love? Am I going to get murdered? Like, what is this guy going to do to me? I feel crazy. Um, and I would say like, again, to the average bear, am I open to everything? E yeah, I'm down. Like I want all the fluids, like spit on me. I'll spit on you. I'll slap you. Like I wanted to just be a little bit raunchy and shit. I'm going to do that type of stuff. That's what I'm saying. That does happen, you know? And I would not be weird. Like, well, <laughs> I was going to say, if you peed on me, honestly, if I fucked with you, I probably wouldn't care. I'm going to keep it real. Like if you squatted over me, <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do that. Um, fuck it. My whole thing is like, I'm a pee on you, but maybe in the shower, like not on my bed. You know what I mean? We got to clean that shit up. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going to be licking, biting, spitting. It's going to get nasty. You know what I mean? I'm down for that. And you want to, here's the thing. If you bring a suggestion in, I'm going to be down. I'm super open to everything. You know, and I feel like that's maybe the luxury of like having that variety. Again, my toxic history um, is I got to see a lot of different things and I'm and I'm thankful for that. Um, and I feel really confident about who I am in that realm of life. So the thing is, what do I say? I'm a freak like, bro, don't bring the whips. Don't bring the chains like I don't need any of that, bro. Like, OK, like one time um, actually, oh, I can't tell you like with who. I'll just say this within this year, um, like this was me not knowing what I was really doing, but I did anal for the first time. No, not like the first time as in like me doing anal for the first time. It was the first time doing anal with this girl. It was her first time doing anal. Actually, it wasn't mine. Um, but you know, we did not use lube. <laughs> we did not use a butt plug. And I just assumed, oh my God, this girl is so wet and I've got this thing so moist that we can just get it in there. And I'm not going to lie to you. It took a little bit of, uh, you know, a little push and pull. It was like, you know, it was going in and out. It's kind of felt like a, like a sexy cheese grater, like <laughs> sound like a car crash going in. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But no, I'm not going to lie to you. She like at the end, she was like, damn, that was fire. But like, you know, it felt good. But she's like, that shit hurt. And then she like, you know, she emptied the kids at the pool afterwards. And she was definitely she said blood was coming out of my ass. And I said, oh, well, next time, maybe we should use lube. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's like, I, I don't know everything, you know, but now a lesson's learned. I, I Googled it and stuff. So maybe I got to start using objects. I don't really like to use sex toys, though, and be honest. Um, I'm a big believer that, oh, okay, here's the thing. I'm down for them, just not at first, right? If we're sleeping with each other off the first time, like no toys, no nothing. Like it's got to be all like sensual and sexy, hot and cold, fucking us, just me and you, the vibe, the room. Ooh, it's just whatever. Ooh, yeah, that. But like after a while, again, if you're fucking consistently, yeah, bring the vibrator out. Sure. Do what you got to do. Like, I, I mean, I don't really care. We'll do whatever. That's what I'm saying. All right. Um, next one. Hey, Chris. So what is your opinion about a guy that suddenly starts unfollowing a bunch of bikini models, um, girls he used to date or hook up with? 
when he hard launches a new girlfriend on Instagram? Do you think that he proactively wanted to lose access to all of these girls or do you think that might be a limit that his new girlfriend uh, put up with him? Um, to be honest, I feel like that's the most respectable shit I've ever heard in my life. Like if homie hard launches a new girlfriend and then unfollows all of the temptations, I would say people he used to date, you know, girls in bikinis to me, that guy's a, a winner. And that's a, that's the type of guy you probably want to get with. Now, am I going to go in and unfollow everyone on my list? No, but I think what that really is about. And I honestly learned about this in my sex addiction book, <laughs> Uh, but you need to get rid of the temptations. Why would you even have that there? If you have a girlfriend, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to look at all that. I'm not trying to make my girlfriend also feel uncomfortable, you know? So I feel like that's just like a, a move that's based on respect. I mean, who knows if that's her boundaries, maybe something happened and you don't really know. Cause that's the other part of it too. It's like, we're thinking this guy is so respectable, but maybe it was a thing where she argued with him about liking girls stuff or whatever. And then she said, for me to feel confident in this relationship, I don't want you to be following them. Maybe he made that decision. I don't really believe in telling somebody what to do with their following versus unfollowing. Again, I'm also not somebody that is trying to put a lot of boundaries on other people, but I also haven't gotten that deep to even be asking somebody to do that. I'm, I'm never going to tell you what to do with your following list or what you're doing. I would just hope that you do things out of respect. And honestly, to me, again, if he did that just on a whim without her fucking even saying anything, to me, that's just respectful. And the other aspect of it too, it's like, yo, what's the point of seeing all that stuff if you have a girl? I don't want to be seeing all that stuff if like I'm trying to be with my girlfriend, you know? Um, it's just easy, quick temptation to see something that might be outside of the relationship. And to be honest, like, what's the point? You know, if you really want true commitment and you're truly committed to somebody, I... I feel like unfollowing and doing all of that is just, to be honest, a good move. Make your girlfriend feel comfortable. Uh, let her feel safe in the relationship, especially since we live in a society where I feel like we allow that temptation. We allow those other people and things to get into the way of commitment. Um, but I'll tell you right now, and, and as somebody that's not even in a relationship, the, the grass is not always green on the other side. I mean, yo, I could leave a girl today and I, even the girl that I'm talking about right now, right? It's not like I'm going to find another girl like her right away. It's not like I'm going to find another girl. Even even though if I've met girls that are even more attractive, let's just say hypothetically, that doesn't mean you're as dope, doesn't mean you're as cool, doesn't mean you're going to hold it down for me as you already do. Um, so when you find a good one and you are secure with that, do all the measures to make them feel comfortable. Um, just don't lose yourself in the process, right? You don't want to lose your individuality in it. I don't even have a question. I just feel like I have to say there's no way that you're a dating coach. Like, I definitely would believe stand-up co co stand comedian before I believe dating coach. Mmm. Okay. So you just came at my neck with that one. And that's what's so funny is... I totally understand, right? I get it. I get the outside perception. You know, you see me talk about women in a way that might seem like, oh my God, like this guy's, he's afraid of commitment. Why would I ask him how to get commitment? Listen, I'll tell you, I'm going to keep it real with you, chief. Um, I study the game. I study this shit very hard. I'm in the conscious woman circle, right? I've read every girl book, bell hooks, all about love. You name it. I probably fucking read it. Um, I'm well studied and I'm well versed in the game. Um, and, and when I say the game, I'm just talking about love and relationships and life. Just because my relationship status does not, I don't have somebody with me right now, does not mean I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to boundaries, when it comes to self-worth, when it comes to your limiting beliefs around love, when it comes to understanding what you're looking for, when it comes to understanding your non-negotiables. I know my shit and I'm really good at what I fucking do. Um, but I understand why Again, I also have that other element of me. And again, we've talked about this. There's a duality inside Chris, which is, trust me, I I love the self-development stuff. I love the boundaries. I love the rules. I love, uh, you know, being honest and real with people. And I love, um, again, just like kind of like that softer, vulnerable side of me. But I also do have that other side. I like to have fun. I like to fuck around. I'm sarcastic. 
I'm going to talk my shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to talk openly about sex. I'm going to talk openly about the women I'm, I, I have crushes on and the people I'm dating because that's part of it. And that's human, right? It's not like that goes away in a relationship, you know? It's, it, I feel like the problem is, is like you're looking for a dating coach to have this such cookie cutter fucking life. But the reality is, is whenever you're given that cookie cutter life, it's never true. It's not true. That is a facade. And that's what's crazy is like I'm up here being authentic and real about all of my inner feelings, all of my inner thoughts. I'm not perfect, but who the fuck is? You think your therapist goes home and practices every little fucking thing they're telling you? No, the fuck they don't. You know what I'm saying? You don't think that your therapist goes home and has problems in their relationship? You don't think your therapist is sometimes procrastinating? Bro, there's a book my therapist assigned me to read and I turned around and I read the whole thing and I said to her, hey, uh, did you, what about this page? What did you think about that? She's like, oh, I... I was like, did you read it? She said, no, I actually, I saw it in a Slack group chat. And I was like, oh, interesting. You assigned me a book that you haven't even read yourself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's interesting, right? But that's, but that's the thing is that you need to understand, again, this is, being a dating coach is not about um, just having this perfect cookie cutter relationship. It's about me understanding and seeing patterns within your life. I could see that you're people pleasing. I could see your, um, anxious traits. I could see my own avoidant traits, right? I'm very self-aware about the things that are, um, that I need to work on. But again, it doesn't just because I'm not perfect in that realm of my life doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to helping people with their relationships, because here's the thing. And, and I'm just going to be fucking quite frank. If you think that, I'm uh, like, I can't get commitment if I didn't want it. You're fucking crazy. To be honest, all my life has really been is people wanting commitment from me and me feeling like I'm not either ready for that type of commitment or me feeling like my value is not equal on the other side. And, and you could call it pompous and you could call it whatever you want. But again, it's like, I understand that my lifestyle and, and in my past, um, you know, it, it might be like, okay, why, how can I take advice from this guy? But bro, think about any great coach in the history of, of sports and anything like that. Some of these guys were not the best player on the court. It's just being able to see things and understand uh, patterns and human relationships and, and how we talk to each other, understanding the toxic guy's mindset while you're out there trying to date him. And I'm telling you, I'm like, bro, no, trust me. I know how I think. That's why I'm good at what I fucking do. Cause I'm self-aware about my own bullshit to the point that I could see the patterns in you and in me. And I'm able to kind of bridge that gap and kind of help you work through those things. Again, a lot of people that I've worked with, I've gotten them to commitment because I've elevated their self-worth. I've elevated the way they looked at their boundaries. I've elevated the way that they have been limiting themselves with the way that they are thinking and the patterns that they are going through. Dating coaching is so much less about just like being like, oh, look at my relationship. You could do the same. It's no motherfucker. Do you value yourself? Do you trust yourself? Do you believe that you could find love? Do you have the confidence that you could actually attain the thing that you so badly desire? So my whole point is I feel like I'm really good at what I do. I've got a really deep passion for it. And the people that see that underneath layer, underneath the stuff that you kind of preserve and see on social media, again, I'm not your prototypical coach, right? Yes, I'm not putting my fucking relationship cookie cutter, everything's perfect, no problems all the time, but that is so fucking unreal. And I don't know how you go for that, but you go for that because you're living in a fantasy world too. So the people that rock with me and the people that actually have given me that chance, here's the thing. I have retention. I haven't even had to promote the coaching because I've had people for seven or eight months. It's way deeper than dating coaching. I, and trust me, I'm in therapy. I know how good some of these therapists are. And to be honest, sometimes I think I'm better. I'm gonna keep it real. And, and it's not about being better. It's about who do you connect with as somebody that could help guide you through life. And I would think that I'm a very trustworthy guide for a lot of people because they know I'm real. They know I'm authentic and they know that I'm knowledgeable. And I don't think that you could ask for something better when it comes to a coach or a therapist in general. And it just depends on what life you want to live. I don't judge people for who they are. I don't judge people for running back to their situationship. I don't judge people for making the quote unquote wrong moves because I don't believe in wrong moves. I believe in lessons. I believe in redirections. That question always just gets me hyped because like, it's just the most bullshit fucking perception thing that you're going to get, but most people aren't even going to get this deep, right? 
How many people are even really listening to my podcast this far? Not many, right? Let's be real. It's hard to get people's attention for that long and for them to really truly see that underbody. Everybody judges a book by its cover always. And the reality is, is I am way too deep. I am way too complex for social media and 30 seconds in a video. If you got to know me in person, you would trust me with your fucking life. To be honest. All right. Well, that's today's fucking podcast. Um, I hope you guys, I don't know, learned maybe a little bit more about me and Next week, I'll start going back to some of the more, I'll take some more of your questions when it comes to relationships and dating. And hopefully that last person can see um, maybe a little bit more of my knowledge and and who I am a little bit deeper. But uh, I appreciate you guys for listening and I'll talk to you very soon.